so uh, we're gonna be watching some videos about First Descendant because as you everyone know, uh, when I saw the trailer I was very excited and I am still very excited to play it next week Tuesday. I was missing shooters from my um, chicken adobo, I still don't know what that means. So I am very happy that finally we have a good shooter coming out because my goodness did we need it. I don't know what these video, uh, videos are, Captain just said they are good so we're gonna be watching it. Mm, is Per a Sounder or a Tori pairing? You gotta find out. Okay. Uh, I'm presuming Captain changed everything because Captain is a mad lad. Uh, most likely, yeah, this is not full loudness because I lower some volume. So. Let's see. What, what, what the we first see Descendant here. is an upcoming free-to-play looter shooter that no, has no, no, no. undergone massive improvements since its wave of beta tests in 2023. Yeah. The grapple hook traversal and unique aesthetics help it stand out amongst its competitors. Above everything, grapple. though, the transparent community engagement grapple. and response to feedback is doing wonders for the ever-expanding game. Like Here are 15 things you need to know before playing the Descendant when it launches on July 2nd. The grappling hook makes traversal a blast. There's no iron heart on that side either. Only this side remains then. The grappling hook was always the feature mm -hmm. that made the first mm -hmm. descendant stand out over the other online looter shooters. And that's even more true after I re I'm really happy to see grapple hook used in that way. I like to see the grappling hook because it makes the game feel faster. It lets you uh, go faster. My god, Chica, sure. Let me just... I can see that you're not very often in my freaking streams. But sure, here you go. This is your third redeem today of those. Oh boy. <clears throat> there you go, Chica. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Why are you guys doing this to me? Sure, I already tried this once time and it didn't really work very well. So it's on your own responsibility if you lose 10,000 points. That's not my not my fault. Nyara, nyara. There you go. The tests. The overhauled grappling hook allows for 360 degree movement so you can swing from Wait, side to side. 360? I want to see that. I didn't saw 360 yet. Drink side water. and adjust acceleration from front Become to back. The icing on the cake is the grapple hook is not contact sensitive and can grapple anywhere in the environment. Anywhere in the environment. I like that. Uh, thank you for the hydrate. Well, there goes my tea. I don't have a single drop left. Environment. In addition to the enhanced mobility and inertia, grappling also plays a function in boss battles with the ability to grapple on a boss directly. Oh, that's cool. Improve movement and parkour elements. The first Descendant's movement has been refined through public beta tests for years now, and the results speak for themselves. For example, characters now mount and vault on ledges in a fluid animation instead of stiffly jumping on top of a platform. Ledge hanging allows players to focus on shooting instead of precise platforming, but also oh, okay. allows I more variety in the platforming due to the enhanced four-way grapple. The painstaking amount of revision the team underwent based on player feedback is laudable. And these mm. dev notes give some confidence that the final product will deliver with smooth traversal and free movement. That's good. Is this Module system allows for expansive build customization. The first Descendant doesn't feature full-blown character creation, to the dismay mm. of some, but the build possibilities are exciting nonetheless. Mm -hmm. At launch, the first Descendant comes with over 600 modules, previously Whoa, named Rune, that's so which many. modify weapons and skill parameters. Modules confer basic buffs like improved air damage and faster skill cooldowns, and I like even the get fire into the nitty-gritty of skill details like switching from blunt dice projectiles to sharp shards inflicting status ailments. Oh, For those who cool. get overwhelmed by complex stat screens, they are finally adding loadouts to swap between characters so you can use pre-existing module setups with- That is such a good um, quality of life thingy. This is good improvements based on feedback. Yep, it is. It's very good. It's perfect. I always love whenever someone tells me that the dev is listening to the community or to the players and actually changing stuff in the game basing on the majority of the feedback, I really appreciate it. And also the fact that I'm seeing so much customization plus quality of life things. Thank you. Thank you, developers. I appreciate it tons. Without having to start from scratch. No yeah. plans for PvP yet. 
the first descendant is a PvE shooter. I'm gonna be honest, I'm happy that there is no PvP. I don't think PvP in games is necessary. I think that we have enough PvP games on the arena. We have Fortnite, we have Apex, we have, well, Dying Overwatch, we have all the Overwatch copies being released. We have a lot of PvP games. LOL, uh, it's enough. We need more cooperative games. Why Helldivers is so popular? Other than the fact that it's very well written, the cooperation is very fun for people. They enjoy playing with their friends. I miss the release uh, Helldivers where they listen to feedbacks. Aren't they listening anymore? I thought that Helldivers is doing pretty well still. As I saw a lot of people agreed on this, I'm very happy. I don't want PvP in this game. I'm a bit hyped for the game. Me too, Lena. I'm very happy. I'm very excited for it. PvP would take away resources. That's true. It would. I just want uh, no leaderboards and no PvP. There is no PvP and probably there won't be leaderboards either. First and foremost, and the devs have stated that they have no plans to introduce PvP I'm very happy in the future. That. Next on is especially that I wanted to hand it over. Uh, Captain can grab it from Discord probably. Uh, especially that the PvP a lot of times turns the players against each other because while you think oh it's just a competition in the game, it becomes toxic at one point or another. Like I've never heard of a PvP game that has zero toxicity. Like even the small games have toxicity. Hi, Dom! Welcome! How are you doing? Oh, how dare you call me Kiri? Don't question it, Captain. Instead, focusing their attention on fine-tuning the balance of the core PvE structure mm, mm, for its mm, July mm. 2nd release. It's encouraging to see that they haven't spread their net too wide in an attempt to capture a market mm, mm. PvP that they didn't design the game around, but many are still hoping for a PvP mm -hmm. mode in the future. It's likely that after a year or so of updates, the First Descendant will add a PvP mode, but it'll remain PvE for the time being. I hope that they don't add the uh, PvP. Chikadoki ah! just subscribed. Chika, thank you so much for the resubbing for a gifted sub. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'd rather not share it on uh, stream. Don't believe it's stream topic. No worries, uh, potato, no, no issue. Is it also so warm in Finland? I don't know how warm it's in Finland. I have no idea, to be honest. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I don't want my sub away. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad that you don't want your sub away. That doesn't happen as often as you would think. The cosmetic selection makes the lack of a character creator easier to swallow. Mm. Characters in the First Descendant are bespoke individuals with pre-existing backstories and lore, so mm. they cannot lore! be created from the ground up. Give However, the, lore. the game does give you a lot of customization options. There's character skins, weapon skins, and grapple hook skins, each Ooh. with color customization. In addition to skins, there's also spawn animations, emotes, and even oh, UI things so to choose cool. from. My favorite cosmetics were the aquarium tank and soda bear backpack, unfortunately exclusive to last year's beta tests. Still, Aww. if those unique cosmetics are anything to go by, there's bound to be some very intriguing customization options to make your character stand out as the game launches and get... I'm hoping that the customization options will not be strictly just paywalled, that they will allow you to grind for them, similarly to what Overwatch 1 did when you had the loot boxes, or something that allows you to unlock them uh, by yourself without purchasing them. I would be very happy if they did that. I und I understand if they cannot afford to do it, but I'm gonna hope. It's updates. I'll take the lead. As you zoom. wish. <laughs> Look at this bunny zoomy. What the heck? Open world fields are more content rich and dense since the beta. Gone are the empty fields from the beta test days. That's the First good. Descendant is adding mini games, collectibles, side quests, and more in an attempt oh, to diversify field activities and create better density of content. The encrypted vault mini game carries Sexy information and resources that the Magisters have hidden away, tying in neatly with the various collectibles like records, which no doubt add to the lore of the set. Wait a second. I heard that we can go around, play, and grab lore! In a free to game, free to play game. Yes, lore. <laughs> Finally, we don't have to wait 
half a year for another animation to get lore. We can just read it if we want. Thank you. Oh my god. Just give me the lore. Thing. Support droids fill out the landscape, giving you ammo pickups, and there's other activities like Volgus Recon Outposts and Void Fusion Reactors to enjoy when not engaging in the core PvE missions. Online sessions take place in battlefield sections within the fields. This is a change of the sprawling open fields of early betas. Players mm. rightly expressed how long it took to team up with players and get to their objectives in these large zones, so mm -hmm. they responded by making missions take place in smaller battlefield maps. That's the density perfect. seems better balanced to allow for less dead time and more moment-to-moment -moment combat, relegating exploration of the map to the side activities outside of online sections. That's very good, because while exploration is very fun, and I believe that it should be an option that the players have, I don't think that when you're queuing up for an online mission, this is the thing that you're looking for. Because most of the time, people who are queuing, uh, playing those games have like, let's say, two, three hours a day to play. And when they are queuing up online, they want to go and see the action. They want to go and, well, shoot things, right? This is what this game is about. And forcing them to go around and aimlessly kind of run is not very fun for them because this is not what they are looking for in their limited time. So letting them explore outside of online sessions when they are not looking for shooting is much better idea in my opinion. I support the bunny on Nexon. Thank you. I appreciate it. I just hope they don't just have five or six weapon model uh, models that repeat at all the time. I don't think they would, Lena. To be honest, it doesn't seem like this is the way that they would go. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't think this is the way that they would go with this. Sessions. Instance dungeons make for a worthwhile endgame. Instance dungeons are uniquely designed to challenge players who have maxed out certain aspects of their character. Mm. These dungeons can be completed solo or co-op and have normal and hard difficulty settings. Okay. The devs have promised these dungeons to feature plenty of traps and unique puzzles besides just combat. Besides instance dungeons, there's also the endgame void intercept battles, basically okay. raids, which add substantial variety to bosses with unique mechanics and higher difficulties. Okay, so basically if you're done with the main game, you now have the possibility of grinding something outside of the main missions if you're done with those and considering that they're eyeing, adding the uh, the difficulty not just by bumping up the numbers which is bumping up the health and bumping up the attack numbers but also adding new actual uh stuff to them like new movement movesets and new abilities is a very good choice i know that it takes time but it makes for so much better experience than just having a tankier and stronger hitting boss in the end i hope uh no bullet uh, sponges like in division division i don't think that's gonna happen Lena. i this doesn't look like game that would do that <laughs> Difficulty modes contain different drop rates and rewards. Mm, the various different mission types have their own normal and hard difficulties, rewarding the player with increased drop rates and better gear for opting in the enhanced challenge. Okay. Fields also have their own normal and hard difficulties as well, providing different enemy spawns and rewards. What's especially cool is the modular difficulty you can impose on yourself for even juicier rewards. There's even a drop rotation system for hard mode that allows you to identify specific loot in a field that you may need. Oh, that's very useful. New Laboratory Zone allows you to test various equipment and characters at your leisure. With such an intimidating amount of different gear and modules, a zone to test it all out is a much needed convenience. The laboratory is a unique environment with its own lore within the world. Oh, so wait, you literally can just grab a character, make a build, and see if you want to grind towards that specific build. Oh my god, thank you. This is also great. This is very, very, very good because... It allows you to decide what path you want to do before you actually start trying to grind it up and then realize halfway through or even at the very end that this playstyle doesn't work for you. You can test it out, decide on it, and then tweak it if you don't like something. Oh, thank you. This is perfect. This is great. We'll also watch a story deep dive. Yes, we will watch a story deep dive. World of Albion that offers this kind of testing. There's a changing station to select a descendant and select any gear and cosmetics that you may want to try out with them. That's but this very area nice. isn't just an empty space to shoot and swing around in wildly. 
You can also summon monsters to test everything out on. Oh, that's great. You can you can even test it against specific type of monsters if you want to target something or if you want to see weaknesses of the build that you're making. Oh boy. Thank you. This is this is very very nice option. Dedicated journal and item library. It continues to surprise me just how many modern games lack a journal tracking progress through the game. Meanwhile, the first descendant will include a journal, item library, and achievements slash titles at launch. We haven't seen any further details regarding the journal, but the library contains all the items that you've collected in a 0 slash 300 format, so you can keep okay. track of your progress. You can track target items and loot using the library tracker too, so farming can be streamlined, done with greater intention. Mm -hmm. That's also another quality of life that is very useful, having place to track stuff that you need to track. It's the Ironheart! Cover me! Might appeal to Monster Hunter fans with its large boss battle. Oh, look at that! Hmm, why does this game appeal to me? Hmm, maybe because I play a lot of Monster Hunter! <laughs> I was waiting for this moment. Hmm, why does this game seem so fun to me? Hmm, what do you mean we're gonna be fighting enemies to grind for better gear to fight stronger enemies? Where did I hear this before? Hmm. <laughs> While the first descendant isn't competing with the likes of Monster Hunter Wilds, it does feature some large boss fights complete with phases and part detachment. The ability to grapple directly onto bosses adds verticality to boss battles and makes a close-range melee build feasible. And we know that normal dungeon points. bosses have invulnerability phases yeah. that require unique solutions, like environmental puzzles and such to overcome. But we'll have to wait and see what the new instance dungeons boss fights will be like when the game finally launches in July. Convenient UX slash UI with years of refinement. Menus were pretty rough to navigate during early betas, which mm -hmm. prompted the team to implement tooltips, equipment compare screens, filters, and more. New Very menu useful. features, such like simultaneous objective waypoints during missions and at-a-glance target confirmation, are much-needed conveniences that make the game that much more smooth to play. Mm -hmm. Versatile System Requirements Based on the Unreal 5 graphical fidelity and the sheer scale of the game, you'd think it would take up a boatload of memory. It's surprising then that the first descendant only takes up 50 gigabytes and 8 gigabytes of RAM on the official Steam page. It looks yeah, like you can even manageable. run the first descendant on older hardware with its Intel i5 3570/AMD. Yeah, I would never. UI is very important for sure. Yes, that's true. UI is very important, especially in shooter games, because UI is something that t uh, has to quickly tell you every information that you need at a glance. You need to know every single thing resource of your health stamina whatever you may use like bullets and stuff also the enemies you have to have those at the glance immediately visible and understanding and then when you go to the menus of changing stuff and all of that you also need them to be readable because otherwise we're getting into the situation where you want to play with your friends but they wait for you 10 15 minutes because you have to find the little thing that you're looking for. They're kind of low-balling uh, those minimum specs. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. What I heard every single time my father was telling me on Steam, don't look at the minimum requirements because the minimum is something that, yes, your game will run, but... Uh, on what quality and if it will even be playable that's a question for another time while recommended is yes your game will run and it's gonna be fine it's gonna be at least mean you medium high quality so i would not take the minimum requirements as something oh look at how very well and efficient the game is done eh, it's always kind of like you're gonna boot up the game and if you're gonna be able to play it that's a different story like if you're actually gonna be able to determine the enemy movements and stuff like that i would never take system requirements minimum as something that you can say the game is well made i i would not do that to be honest that's not a good idea it's never recommended to actually freaking play on those uh on those specs fx 8350 minimum requirements though expect much worse fidelity and performance with that setup Crossplay between pc ps4 oh, ps5 yes! xbox series x and s xbox yes! one Although Cross the first play. descendant is on all the major consoles barring the Switch, 
optimization is best suited well, for the PC. The team at Nexon is somewhat new to console development, having previously only done PC. I wonder why they didn't put it on Switch. Hmm, what could be the reason for that? I have no single little idea. <laughs> and mobile titles, so we should expect some bugs and optimization woes for the console versions. Mm, that being okay. said, the team has been transparent about their dedication to console optimization, stating in the crossplay open beta test, we were new to consoles, so features like gamepad controls and optimization weren't up to par. Okay. Here's hoping the console versions aren't a train wreck to play and run reasonably well at launch. Good. Hopefully, hopefully they can do it well. So this is the Iron Heart. This could wipe out all of the bolts, right? Hey, did you know that we have Gaming Bolt upload new videos every day? Stick around. Okay, so this video has finished. Do, 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 do. Let me open the next one. The next one is do, 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 do. Uh, Dev Talk Story Deep Dive. Ooh, we want Story Deep Dive. M me likey Story Deep Dive. There we go. Me likey Story and Lore. Give. Give all the lore. First Descendant is the leader of the PR team that has been created by the PR team. All the characters in the story are created by the PR team. The reason is that the PR team has been created by the PR team. The PR team has been created by the PR team. The PR team has been created by the PR team. The PR team has been created by the PR team. The PR team has been created by the PR team. Wait, so this is something similar to Stellar Blade. It kind of reminds me of mashup between Stellar Blade and Helldivers. It kind of, kind of what re reminds me of. 분 삼아 전쟁을 일으켰습니다. 거신들의 사명은 현재로서 밝힐 순 없지만 그들은 이것을 저주라고 생각하고 있습니다. Look at this huge boy! My gosh! Or near? It's a classic trope. Kind of yes. 이렇게 First Descendant의 세계는. 선대의 운명을 계승한 자들의 충돌에서 시작됩니다. 이 비극적인 운명을 이번 세대에서 끝낼 수 있을지 혹은 또 다음 세대로 계승시켜야만 할지 모든 것은 플레이어의 분신이 돼 계승... I, I wonder how was this actually passed on from the pre predecessors. Is it again the thing of humanity has a different planet to be on and they are just sending uh, humans who have been like trained to try and reclaim it? Or is it like they are passing it somehow? Like, I don't know, they have a cocoon somewhere on the planet where they are just activating them or something. I, I wonder. <laughs> Okay. Well, I would be surprised if it was not being better than human if there is a guy who literally can control fire, but sure. <laughs> 훈련된 계승자 한 명의 전투력은 수백, 수천의 벌거스를 가볍게 해칠 수 있을 정도로 막강합니다. Okay, so this is the trope that was the same in uh, in the Stellar Blade that we are just super super military people who can de uh, defeat those. Okay. 하지만 인류는 전투에서 이기고 있을지언정 전쟁에서는 지고 있습니다. 음. 무한에 가까운 적들의 보급은 계승자라는 전술 수단만으로는 어찌할 수 없는 목표였기 때문입니다. 안타깝지만 현재 인류가 직면한 상황은 심각합니다. 시간이 지날수록 차원의 벽이 벌어지며 더 많은 거신이 나타나고 있죠. 차원을 건너온 침략자 벌거스들은 압도적인 병력과 기술로 행성을 지배하고 있습니다. Oh, okay, so yeah, this is like the uh, the aliens attacked and we're trying to push them back. 그에게 남은 방법은 무한 에너지 연속체 철의 심장을 손에 넣는 것뿐입니다. Okay. 그렇게 인류는 차원의 벽 폐쇄에 필요한 물질, 철의 심장을 찾아 수색 작전을 펼치고 있지만
Okay, so there was some time... The models are absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Speaking of, hello there. Uh, so there was some type of portal open for those aliens. Okay, that's... that's... okay. 거신도 벌거스도 모두 잉그리스에 있는 철의 심장을 노리고 있습니다. 그나마 다행인 것은 Okay, so everyone are kind of trying to grab the iron heart and we're just one of the one of the species that are trying to grab it basically. 철의 심장 전용 수색 시스템 안내자를 찾았다는 점이죠. Okay. So we have an advantage. Nice. 인류의 선조 선각자들은 후세대에게 운명을 물려주며 한 가지 시스템을 준비해 뒀습니다. 계승자 전용 유전 사용자 인터페이스 코드명 안내자가 바로 그것입니다. 안내자는 계승자들의 유전 물질인 아르케. Oh, so it's okay. So it's literally in their DNA to grab the freaking iron heart. That's kind of smart. You cannot take it away from them in easy way. Other than killing them. 계승자들만이 보고 들을 수 있는 자율형 AI입니다. 음. 주요 기능은 철의 심장을 추적하고 철의 심장을 제어하기 위한 전략 oh, 전술을 okay. 안내하는 것입니다. 비록 코드가 손상되어 옛 기억과 대부분의 핵심 기능을 상실했지만 남아 있는 추적 시스템만으로도 철의 심장 수색에 엄청난 이점을 제공합니다. 음, 음. 마치 모래밭에서 바늘을 찾기 위한 금속 탐지기를 손에 넣은 것 같죠. Yeah, that 물론 makes sense. 안내자가 다른 목적을 가지고 있을지는 의심해 볼 필요가 있습니다. Wait, so they have an AI that is supposedly tracking the iron heart, supposedly for them to get it, but the AI also may have its own motives to grab the heart. That's so complicated, man. <laughs> I love this. 하지만 눈앞에 적을 두고도 인류는 안내자를 의심하며 지켜볼 시간이 있을까요? 인류의 사령부가 다투고 있는 동안에도 벌거스 수뇌부는 그들만의 계획을 차근차근 실행하고 있습니다. 그들이 바로 현재 벌거스의 지도자 카렐과 그의 수하인 아몬입니다. 음. 벌거스가 인류를 침공한 지도 어느새 100년이 되어가고 있습니다. 그들은 무엇을 이루었을까요? 벌거스는 압도적인 병력과 전쟁 기술로 행성 곳곳을 거대한 식민지로 만들었습니다. So wait, these are humanoids, but not humans, and they're destroying the planet. This is such a complicated lore. I would love to have a written, uh, written thing because I'm both uh, making sure that I read everything, but I also partially listen. But I love the fact how many details there is. Like you have these different colonies and races, and these are having these motives, and these these motives, and then these want this one, and they all want the heart because all of them can gain from this. But the humanity technically has a good thing, just like Final Fantasy, kind of yes, kind of like Final Fantasy. That's true. 불모의 땅이 되어버린 광산지대에는 사이버그 벌거스 불멸의 군단이 소유한 거대 군수 공장이 자리. Oh, so the Vulgars are cybergs. Okay. 이곳에서 그들은 우리 행성에서만 볼수 있는 희귀 금속 카이퍼를 무분별하게 채굴하고 재처리하고 있습니다. 오케이. Okay. 그리고 우리 인류에게 자신들의 믿음을 전파하려는 벌거스 진리의 교단은 okay. 행성에서 가장 아름답고 생명이 넘치던 곳에 교단의 성역을 만들었습니다. So, okay. Classic Eastern devs can't have a simple. Listen, listen. Simple is no fun. Simple is no fun. We all want complicated lore. Let's go. 인류를 멸종시키고 싶었으면 전함을 끌고 알비온부터 공격했어도 충분했을 텐데요. 물론 알비온 산맥에 설치된 대궤도 방공망을 우습게 볼 수는 없겠지만 하려면 다 방법이 있었을 겁니다. 카르엘과 아몬에겐 분명 그렇게 하지 않은 의도가 있을 겁니다. 그들의 목적이 정말 철의 심장. I now wonder because these are cyborgs. I now wonder if uh, cyborgs were creation of humans, but then they decided to actually go rogue and do their own stuff for their own reasons. So they uh, basically left humanity and started to be evil. And now that's why humanity is afraid of the AI that is in the DNA of the descendants because they already have seen what happens if the if the intelligent creations rebel against humanity. That would be a cool concept if that's true. I'm gonna be honest. 하나뿐일까요? 어쩌면 그들은 인류 가운데서 계승자들이 나타나기 기다린 것은 아닐까요? 이 운명의 결과는 앞으로 펼쳐질 퍼스트 디센던트의 이야기 속에 있습니다. Okay. 
지금까지 플레이어 캐릭터로서만 등장했던 계승자는 앞으로 스토리의 주축이 되어 다양한 퀘스트에 등장하게 됩니다. 이 음. 과정에서 계승자들이 어떤 성격 그리고 어떤 사연을 음. 가지고 있는지 플레이를 통해 자연스럽게 느낄 수 있도록 게임을 디자인하고 있습니다. 음. 저희는 방대한 세계관과 함께 그 속에 살아가는 사람들의 모습을 그려내고 I wonder if they are gonna do similar thing what Overwatch did where all the characters have very specific interactions with each other due to the, their um, backstories and their personalities because if yes, if like during the gameplay each character has different voice line with each other it's gonna be super fun. I wanted to create a fight. The players are not just a fight. They all have feelings. They all have to live in a fight. 꿈과 희망 그리고 아픔을 가지고 있습니다. 음, 음. 글레이는 잃어버린 자신의 딸이 잉그리스 어딘가에 살아 있을 것이라고 굳게 믿고 있어요. 음. 타일은 자신과 동고동락하던 작업반을 몰살시킨 벌거스에게 끝없는 분노와 복수심을 지니고 At least he has a good outlet for those. 고 <웃음> 있습니다. 발랄한 듯한 버니도 홀로 남겨지며 받았던 마음의 상처를 숨기려고 애쓰고 있죠. 이렇듯 모든 계승자들은 저마다의 사연과 이야기가 있고 싸워야 할 이유가 있습니다. 오픈 베타 이후 한층 더 단단해진 이야기를 통해 계승자 캐릭터들과 만날 수 있도록 준비했습니다. 여러분의 최애가 상처를 극복하며 성장하는 음, 과정을 음, 음, 음. 보고 싶으시다면 특정 계승자 스토리 콘텐츠를 기대하셔도 좋습니다. Where is it? Giaba! I want! <웃음> 이제 곧두 세계가 서로 만나게 됩니다. 퍼스트 okay. 디센던트의 세계와 여러분들이 계신 전 세계가 만남을 준비하고 있죠. 개발팀이 바라는 것은 전 세계의 유저들이 매일 퍼스트 디센던트의 세계에서 즐거운 경험을 얻는 것입니다. I really like that they basically are going. Here is the story. It's super complicated. Here is the basics of it, figure it out, and then go play, and we're gonna show you the rest via the gameplay. I'm very happy that, again, we're not doing what Overwatch did, where most of the story was basically just hidden. Thank you for the help, Blood! That most of the story was basically hidden behind waiting for either the comic books to, uh, to arrive, or either the uh, animations to be shown. Because the events in Overwatch at certain point stopped being the story events, like they were not expanding the story and world anymore. So I'm hoping that they can keep up and adding more to this lore and make it more fun and more interesting and more deep. And I really, really wanna learn more and give me lore. I'm sorry, I'm a little lore creature. I really like stories. <laughs> 세계 곳곳의 계승자들과 하루라도 빨리 만나고 싶습니다. 음, 음. 함께 잉그리스를 지키면서 전우들이 어떤 이야기를 원하는지 경청하고 싶습니다. 모두의 경험이 퍼스트 디센던트의 스토리가 됩니다. <웃음> 그럼 계승자 여러분, 다가올 두 세계의 만남을 기대해 주세요. 인류 최후의 보루 알비온에서 no. 가장 먼저 기다리고 있겠습니다. Okay, okay, so it, does it mean that whenever I log in, this boy will be standing there and waiting for me to play? Because if yes, that's cool, I wanna meet them all. Please, I'm gonna fangirl most likely. <laughs> Good music, let's go! I did the wishlist it. Dee good, good, good stuff, good stuff. Me love lore, give more lore. Can we play together with Tori? Yes, Lena! When I'm gonna be playing it on Tuesday next week, my plan is that we're all gonna be playing this game. And most likely what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be swapping... Uh, it has a crossplay, so it's even perfect. Most likely what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be swapping Stellar Blade... Stop. Uh, I'm gonna be swapping Stellar Blade on the Saturdays for First Descendant if I'm gonna have fun with this game and I'm gonna make it play with community stuff. Okay, I have another video here, so let me throw it. This is just a 50 second video about the bunny, the, the character that I'm waiting for, the character that I want to play and Captain already told me I cannot play it at the launch, but it's okay. Uh, why do you hate me? Okay, no, you don't hate me, perfect. Bunny!
Banizemis. Oh, this is such a cool pose. I can be a sniper and a fast zoom. Let's go. By the way, this boss looks super cool. I really like his design in general. Ah! I want the bunny. I know that I cannot play it at the release, but the bunny. Let, let, me, let me have her. Also, yeah, I want to just point out, yeah, this boss design, I really like this boss design. I think this is super cool. So yeah, I'm very, very excited for this character, even though I know I cannot play it at release. The last video that we have is the new prologue and the first 15, uh, 17 minutes of it. Jumping battle bunny, yes! A bit of everything, all of the time. Yes, this is the gameplay of the game. So uh, let's do this. Uh, let me do, 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 do. do this that way. Let's see how the gameplay looks like because we saw some snippets, but I wanna see more. I wanna see more gameplay, please. I want to see what you're cooking for me. According to the investigative core, the Ironheart is in the ruins. The I'm most likely gonna be using the Korean uh, voicing. Bunny important! Bunny the most important! Bunny grabs the heart! The rest just protect. <laughs> so, who is going to take this on? Bunny. Oh, so this is how you uh, choose your character at the Even beginning. Easier if I just froze everything? Okay, so this is how you choose your characters right now. You have three to choose. Okay. I'll go. I just need to blow up everybody except Bunny. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I think this is the fire boy. I kind of hoped that this his face would be a bit... I'm not certain that this is the fire boy. I might be wrong because I don't know the characters very well yet. Uh, so I'm hoping that this is not him because I hoped that the fire guy would look a bit better. <laughs> Why would he not include Bunny in the blowing up activity? Excuse you, Matfish! Bunny important! Bunny very important! Bunny cannot blow up! Bunny grabs the heart! Right? And the big boy. What's the big boy? Leave it to me. Defense is my forte. Okay, so this is Tank. We have DPS and I guess healer? I'm not certain. He looks very nice. I like his horns. He has a nice outfit, I like it. Okay, so we can skip cutscenes if you don't care for those, I'm never gonna do that. Those are ruins? Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> There's no iron heart on that side either. Only this side remains then. Let's get this over with. Hey, why is the iron heart here in the first place? Aren't you curious? Focus on the assignment, Bunny. Our objective is to find it before Corel does. I wonder if she has other name. Focus on the assignment. Yeah, yeah, I got it. What if this those bogus creeps suddenly come out of nowhere? Then I will take over. You secure the heart as planned. I like her shoes. Her shoes look very nice. Kinda cowboyish, but not really. No, I'm actually looking at her shoes. I don't know if I have I get the better stop you for that. Secure the heart as yeah, I like her shoes. I just like the design. And I like other things too, but shoes are cool. I like them. Okay, so this is the end so, of the cutscene. Do you know what the heart looks like? We'll know when we see it. Come on, hurry up. 
PC Gamer Fest and Nintendo Direct had a lot of those. Exactly, just look at those and you have lots of cozy, cute, family-friendly games. Okay, so typical WASD movement, shift to run, space to jump. What's going on? All operatives report. Oh no, this is the guy from the top. We almost died. I'm okay, by the way. Roger that. <laughs> Resume operation. Okay, so I'm guessing Alpha is the guy who was like telling them what to do. Uh, that's what I recognize from his voice, at least. Our path's been cut off. We better find a way around. Wait, bunny. I should go first. Okay, so we have a tutorial of shooting before we meet. Okay. Nothing I can't handle. I'll be there soon. I'm just getting warmed up. No need to brag. Come on, let's keep going. Why no brags? Me like brags. Wow. What is all this? A very basic tutorial, but I don't think it's more needed at this stage, to be this honest. Is the only place left. There has to be something here. Oh. Why is stuff moving? That's no good sign, right? Space. Of course. Why did it open though? Why did it open? <laughs> Such a good looking casting. The casting is good. I'm still asking. Why did the door open? Who opened it? What opened it? Wh why? Wh why? Okay, automatic, but why? What, what like triggered it? It's the iron heart. I think groceries. <laughs> Lol. Technology, Tori. No, that's not how this works. Okay, so we have a little backpack specifically for this. We have a super cool backpack for super cool thingy. So this is the Iron Heart. This could wipe out all of the Volus, right? And three of these used together can. Yes, her hair is very, very pretty. So I really cool. like it. It's very nicely made and uh, oh, created. Oh, it's speaking to him. That's no good. He wants to touch it. He wants to poke it. Poke hey, it is pokey poke. We want the pokies. Poke. He poked the, the heart. No good. No good. He touch it, touch it. He touch it, touch it. I think this is the AI alternative motifs, right? That what they were saying. Yeah, I think that this might be because of the AI, right? That the AI is having its motive. Rubber. <laughs> boop. Ha ha, you better not boop again. Double jump. Okay, we, we like the double jumpies. Middle button to fire hook, and to grapple hook, okay. So this is the movement, basically. Yeah, this is guide. This is literally the AI trying to influence our actions. Okay. Interesting, I wonder. But the fact that you can grapple hook to anything means that what they had to literally do is create an environment where you cannot get stuck, but also basically has no... Uh, locks for you so it must have been a hell for collisions movement kind of reminds me of a uh, rise now kind of yes although i would say it reminds me of naraka a lot because naraka was also a naraka is a um battle royale that also uses a lot of hookers say what
why AI would want the heart? I wonder. I wonder what AI's motives would be. Is it because it wants it for itself? Because it knows it's real power, so it wants to run on it? Okay, I hear the heart working, so I wonder if we are... Hallucinating, or are we actually transported? I think we're hallucinating. Hello, AI. This is a space where your unconscious takes physical form. Oh, that's no good. I have been waiting for you since the beginning. No, you were not. You were trying to grab the heart for some reason. The ancestors created me for the purpose of guiding the descendants. Yeah. I have created this process. As a way of accessing the descendant's consciousness. We must follow the will. I wonder if she got crooked, the AI, where the ancestors wanted her to program her to the point that she need, she wants the heart so badly that it doesn't matter what's happening. Whenever the descendant is nearby the heart, they go crazy because they're programmed that they need to get the heart. I wonder if this is the issue. Of the ancestors. Accept your calling, descendant. Did we touch the heart? Uh oh. I think we touched the heart. Huh? I don't think that's good. What happened? Oh, what is going on? I saw something. Yep. What's yep. gotten into you all of a sudden? Well, doesn't Wait. matter. It's the Volgus. They oh my us. god, the hair physics. With the, wow, they have a lot of work on that. Hurry. I know. That's ours now. Our little Start backpack. Or not. Oh, he missed a lot of shots there. I don't think they're scared of you shooting. I think they have to die. Well, if they are inside, then there means there's more outside, right? Uh-oh. Wait, what do you mean retrieve iron heart? What do you mean? The bunny has it! Oh, join the bunny, okay. The Vulcus attacked. Where's that coming from? I have synchronized with your consciousness. Okay, so yeah, this is like a typical tank. We have a shield, we have everything we need, okay. We dig, we, we tanky. Oh, we have controls and control right. Okay. Useful. Followers now. Wait, everyone has snipers? Oh, that's useful. So basically we can use whatever weapons we want. Okay. That's very nice. That's very nice. I really like that idea. That you're not limited by the character, hopefully. Okay. Okay, so if it's on cooldown, it's just gonna be weakened. No touch. Okay, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. So we can punch someone, but if it's on cooldown, it's gonna be weak. Probably it will have talent specs and upgrades for weapon types. Yeah, most likely, yes. Hmm, okay. You are under the influence of your unconscious mind. Test your 
What is this power? Noise. This is such a smooth, uh, such a smooth feeling of shooting when you go around and just can swap between melee shooting and basically sniping enemies. This is very nice and and uh, smooth, as I see. I really like that. Yes. SFX also looks very nice. The special effects look very, it's very been fun. A while since very the last good. Report. Have you regrouped with Bunny? I need confirmation. Understood. I have arrived at the rendezvous point. Bunny, report your location. Bunny, report. Uh oh, Bunny not here. That's no good. That's no good because I want to play as the bunny. Give back the bunny. Uh oh, that's a lot of enemies. Weapon sound good? I cannot really say much to that yet. It sounds good for its design. Uh, but it is... It does sound good. Yeah, it does sound good. Oh boy. He can just stop our bullets. That's no good. Uh oh. Oh no, he's using the force, guys! He's using the force! <laughs> oh, that must have killed. Oh no, that painful. Uh oh. Bunny, run! No, not the ears! No! Time has finally come. No! We needed it! Oh, he. Oh no. Uh oh. He's handling the power! Oh, that's no good. I see, so this guy is a typical evil man. He doesn't care for his own people, apparently. No, not the bunny! Rail made contact with the heart. It's triggered an unidentified anomaly. Oh boy. What is he? Does he absorb it? Oh boy. Oh, that doesn't sound good. I don't think that was the plan. Oh? No, he didn't destroy it. Okay. Just lots of energy going through him. Oh. Wait, so basically he summoned the freaking huge monsters? Oh my goodness, that's a uh, <laughs> fun little thing that can happen apparently, okay. Okay, and the monster is not on their side. It's just there, noted. He's literally using the force. Who is this man? <laughs> is it a Sith? Okay, he's just going home. He's just okay. This this got broken. Whatever. Bye. <laughs> Peace out. He gone. Oh boy. I lost Corral and the objective. Grave Walker approaching. Awaiting orders. It seems we have been normal. You're free to engage. Okay, we ha we gotta fight the first. So this is how they introduce us to the first boss fight, basically. Okay. It's Tippy Tippy waiting for us. This boy. Yup. This boy. <laughs> Okay. okay, so we have unlimited bullets. Thank you. That's very nice. Uh, we just have to reload. 
I'm very glad that we don't have to run from point to point and uh, grab the bullets here and there because this is just kind of boring sometimes. Like either at the very beginning of the game, you're just constantly struggling with the bullets and the ammo or and in the end you never really bother about it because you have too much or it's always a struggle that is not fun so i'm very happy if this just stays unless this is just tutorial it might like that when the game comes out it might also be that this is a tutorial area and tutorial boss so they gave the uh, unlimited bullets we'll see or maybe for a special guns yes Okay, so I wonder if destroying certain parts actually affects the abilities of the bosses because of yes, that's super nice. What are you doing on top of it? Are you killing it? <laughs> Got very different in this right. The heart. It's all my fault. No. Coronel must not capture all of the iron hearts. Oh we wait, so there's more than one. Two before he does. Sorry. No time to rest. I really, I really, really like this. I'm really enjoyed uh, for... I really enjoy what I see. Uh, both the story as well as the gameplay and all the animatics, everything that I saw so far was very, very, very fun for me to watch. I really hope that whenever the game comes out, they are ready with their servers and their servers will not be like a uh, battle, like Blizzard servers, like where you wait in the queue for a thousand years before you get into the game. So I hope that's not gonna be the case because my goodness, if it is, I'm gonna be angry. Uh, I really hope not. Uh, so next week, Tuesday, 100 fucking percent I'm playing this game. Either I'm hoping I can stream it depending on what time it comes out because I actually didn't check what time exactly it comes out But I'm hoping it comes out at the time that I can actually streaming stream it. So I'm hoping for that uh, I hope that you guys will join me whoever is interested in that game. I'm definitely uh, excited I was missing some good shooters in my life uh after playing Overwatch for years and Apex for some more, I'm really, I'm really kind of, you know, rusty, but I'm missing that. So I'm hoping that's gonna, uh, that's gonna really this little kind of, a little kind of light. This, this game will fill the void in my little gamer heart that I'm missing. Everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I had lots of time, uh, lots of fun.